Howdy folks, for today's video I just wanted to do like a really quick channel status update and just let you know what I've been doing lately. Uh, for those of you who listen to my podcast, you'll probably be more aware of the things I've been doing with guns lately and stuff. But for those of you who haven't, then I just wanted to do this short video to give you a quick heads up of why you haven't seen any like ammo videos uh, recently and whatnot. But I'll let you know that the last three weekends I went back to back to back camping. So about three weeks ago I took my son and the two youngest daughters camping and I went camping with my buddy Riley and we ended up going up to some family property and we did a bunch of shooting. And it was really fun. It was really relaxing because I think all we did that day was shoot. We shot uh, our air guns. Okay, try holding more like eight MOA. There we go. So uh, we shot our 300 blackout break action rifles and basically we we're shooting at some really tiny targets out at uh, out to about I think 100 yards and we just shot like in these camp chairs most of the day and I kind of want to end with it. <laughs> There you go. Woo! <laughs> I'll be done. <laughs> Just super fun, relaxing. It was it was a good good break from work and I don't know, with all the covid stuff it feels good to get out and get away from people and go in the mountains and have fun and shoot stuff. So I did that and then two weeks ago I took my family and we went down to the Arches National Park. I'll probably share a few short videos and you know just show some of the cool amazing uh, sites of that national park. In Utah we're, we're blessed to have was it four national parks all uh, within not too far of a distance and my, my kids have really been enjoying visiting those national parks and we, we like to go out and do a bunch of hiking and my kids are really good hikers. And so I, you know, on one of the hikes, we got there at dusk at one of the arches. And so we had the whole thing to ourselves to, to uh, take pictures and do mess around and I did I did a couple flying ninja kicks that we got on uh, on camera my daughter is a good photographer and she was able to catch me in the air and we did uh, one of the cool things about arches is that you get to uh, walk on these they're called fins and it's kind of like if you took a like a sandstone hill and just sliced it like bread and then you just pulled some of those away and so you have a you know a, a slice of bread and then another slice of bread and another slice of bread and these are made out of out of like sandstone or some kind of stone and it's really pretty cool because some of the hikes you get to walk on top of these these tall fins and you get to look on one side and there's like a cliff and then you look on the other side and there's a cliff some of them get pretty tall and it's it's kind of exhilarating when you're just running up these things and you know that if you you know, if you fall down, you're probably dead. You know, or if you fall down on the other side, you're probably dead or break a lot of bones. But just exhilarating that you can go and explore. And the there's a really beautiful red rock. And I don't know, the sunsets are amazing. Everything's just amazing at these national parks. And so we've been trying to go to those with the with the kids. And we had the fall break and went down there and just had a blast. Whoa. Whoa! It looks even cooler on video. <laughs> Just taking a sip. <laughs> ah, refreshing. And 
got to camp. I love camping. So, and then this last weekend, I went with like the, the local scouts and I guess it's the, our church's young men's group. And I got to, to help out with them and their camp out. And we wanted to do one, I think one last camp out before, before it gets busy with, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas and those holidays and stuff. So we just went close by in the Provo Canyon. And one of the th cool things was, is I'd been kind of wanting to do, to go hammock camping, you know, sleep in a hammock and, and whatnot without uh, using a tent. Just, you know, strapping the hammock to two trees and throwing your sleeping bag inside. And uh, you, I did some research on it and you have to do, make sure that you have enough insulation on the outside of the hammock so that you don't just get uh, frozen butt syndrome or whatever they call it. It's cold butt syndrome or something like that. But yeah, anyways, to stay insulated properly, you need layers on the outside of the hammock and it doesn't hurt to have a few layers on the top. So I, I got some new camping, camping gear and I was able to test that out this last weekend and it was probably the one of the worst weekends to to test it for the first time, but I had enough gear and enough insulation that it was uh, really good. So due to these last three weekends of camping and stuff, camping takes a lot of prep and a lot of work. So I've been kind of drawn away from all my casting and reloading projects, but a couple of the projects I want to get get working on or and I, I don't even know what order if you guys have a preference of the order that I do these you know leave a comment down below and let me know but one of the one of the projects I want to work on is making some 400 grain subsonic 44 mag loads and I want to take out my new Marlin dark uh, lever action 1894 in 44 mag and maybe talk about it and shoot some of those subsonics suppressed and i think that'd be pretty fun i don't know if i've ever heard of a 400 grain subsonic uh well 400 grain bullet being shot in a 44 mag before but i mean that's like 4570 bullet weight level but sounds fun and i did some research on that marlin dark the 1894 dark and uh, before I bought it, I wanted to make sure it had fast enough twist on the barrel. And it actually has, it's pretty interesting, the Marlin Dark has a 1 in 10 twist rate on the barrel, whereas the traditional uh, Marlin 1894s in 44 mag have a 1 in 38 twist, which is, that is like a kind of blows my mind that you would do a twist rate that extreme you know I guess 1 in 10 versus 1 in 38 that's like crazy and uh, anyways I really want to do some some casting and loading with some heavy 400 grain projectiles in the 44 mag I think that'd be cool I also have the gel blocks ready for the 195 grain hollow point bullet for the 38 special and that one was originally made for the snubbies so i want to shoot it in my scandium frame revolver and probably borrow evan's little uh i think it's, it's a model 10 i can't remember which one it is but the his smith and wesson old gun uh 38 special i think that could take plus p loads anyways and but uh Maybe shoot it in a couple of other guns, but I want to see what it does in gel cast with some just soft, almost dead soft. Maybe I'll do like a 50-50 of stained glass window scrap, which has tin in it, and then some pure lead. And uh, just to see what kind of expansion I can get with those hollow points. So that's another project. I also have some air gun pellet molds that I've been playing around with and I want to do a video on those for the people who are interested in the, the air gun stuff. Air guns are pretty cool because they can, you know, you can get out and shoot in your backyard if, you know, in, in some cases uh, according to your city ordinances, but 
you know, you can go out and shoot and they're, they're quiet. They're really accurate. Some of them are really accurate if you get the PCP air guns and you know, the high end stuff, it's, you can shoot for like dirt cheap, like get buy a tin of pellets for like 15 or 18 bucks and you get 500 of them. And so, I mean, air is almost free. So if you have a pump, you could even pump up your, your, your guns with that, but you can get your air tanks filled really cheap and then fill up your air guns. Kind of like this one right here. This is the Ed Gun Lacy, the Gen 1. This is one of my, I'd say is probably my favorite, my currently favorite air gun. And cool little compact air gun, but yeah, so some people might be interested in the air guns. I also am working on a project with my shorty, uh, it's actually SBR'd, but it's some people might, the older viewers of my channel might recognize this. This is my 12 inch Encore in 4570. And it came with this, or came with, this is the scope base that I was using on it. And what I want to do, I have a scope base ordered from EGW and it will allow me to use this Heritage Arms. It's their minute of angle base, the cold shot. And what this does, of course, some people have already seen it, but this one has adjustability up to, I can't remember, it's like something like 300 MOA or something crazy, but it has a dial and you can, you know, dial your elevation using this. And so I thought it'd be cool to mount a scope. I probably need something with a little bit more eye relief for this one because, you know, I don't want my, I don't want to get scoped with the 4570. But the idea is I mount, get my suppressor, throw it on here, get that new scope base, put it on here and then put that adjustable scope base on top and then I can zero it at like, I don't know, 100 yards or 50 yards, I don't know, whatever works good. And then I can use that to dial and then I, I really wanna take some, probably some 405s, some 405 grain uh, lighter loads and lob them out as well as my favorite little, little, the 500 grain pointy NOE 458 SOCOM bullets. Those work really good with Trail Boss and Subsonic in this thing. So I think it'd be cool to actually dial with enough elevation to, you know, to have it hold over instead of holdovers, actually dial with that. And the problem I had before was that I needed a cheek riser and I don't know if anybody makes a good cheek riser for a Thompson Center Encore plastic or polymer stock. I don't think anybody does. So what I got ordered is this. This can take buffer tubes. So this will replace that and then I can throw a buffer tube on it. And then I'll be able to put like an AR stock with an adjustable comb or adjustable height. And I'm thinking, I'm not sure which, which stock I wanna do. I want one with a fairly decent amount of elevation, you know, for those really high far shots. So that's another project that I wanna do is do some lead lobbing with the 4570. I haven't shot my 4570s in a long time and I'm, I think I'm getting uh, a little bit of, uh, I miss it, that's what it is. I miss shooting my 4570s, I love 4570s. And some of the other projects, I'm still uh, slowly, slowly working at the swaging, swaging 223 bullets, 55 grain 223 bullets out of 22 spent shell casings. And I have a swaging die kit 
from Corbin. And I, I bought one of their swaging presses, and so I, I want to try doing that too. You know, not, not, my goal isn't to make, you know, match grade bullets or ammo with those. More of a, you know, I'd rather save my better bullets for my better guns or my longer distance shooting guns and then shoot the, my little SBR, the short barreled uh, AR pistol or SBR, you know, depending on what lower I throw on it and shoot some of that with just blasting ammo. And I also have a, a 223 bullet mold that I need to do some load development for and do some testing. And that's one that uh, James Pollard was, was helping with. And I have these bullets coated cast size and just need to do some load development. So I've got all that stuff on the docket but I don't know timing on, on any of those. And I also I also want to do a hollow point 50 Action Express video and uh, some other stuff. So anyways, if, if you guys have a preference on any of my projects on which ones you want to see first, or if you want to see more 458 SOCOM or 500 mag or whatever, you know, let me know, leave a comment below. Oh, and I also got my barreled action uh, back from, well, I kind of got two back from Eagle Eye Shooting, Kenny at Eagle Eye Shooting. And uh, I have one in six arc and the other one is 22 Creedmoor. So I need to do some load development with those. And uh, yeah, but anyways, if you guys have a preference on the projects that I, uh, start working on then you know leave a comment let me know and if you know lots of people recommend one or prefer one project over another then i'll work on that first so time being limited as it is then whatever you guys want to see most i can work on so anyways this video has been way long enough so hopefully you enjoyed some of it or all of it or whatever but uh Take care, stay safe, have fun.